Hey guys, uh, I want to start putting a series together, a uh, question that you're definitely going to see on uh, the AP exam. I don't know if they're going to have a multiple choice test this year. I'm assuming they will. So I just want to kind of throw out some questions that I've always seen there. Um, you probably should have done this already in your classes, but one of the things is differentiability. Now I went ahead and did this. I want to show you what I did with my students here. Okay. So it says, find the values that will make the function differentiable. Now, remember, when you're talking about differentiable, we're assuming that it's continuous. Okay, that's the first thing. Okay, so here's what you're going to go ahead and do. So here we have this example here. All right, so here's what, what you got to do. When it says differentiable, okay, we're assuming it's, it's already continuous. You're going to take the derivative of both. You're going to set them equal to each other and just plug in that value that's in question. So here, if you notice here, we're gonna we're we're over here. Uh, it becomes three a x squared equals two x. Okay, you see that? You see what I did? Don't look at this part just yet. So we have take the derivative of this guy gives you this. Right? Remember a is a constant, and then x squared becomes two x. We plug in our two. We end up with a equals to one third. Right? Now, how do I find out? the other value b well now we go back and we use continuity because we're assuming it's continuous so what do we do the limit from the left has to equal the limit from the right at that specific point so we set the left side equal to the right side and we plug in that value but now you notice now we have the value of a that we can use so we plug in our a value we plug in our two and now we can solve for the unknown which is b we do the math and we end up with b is equal to negative four thirds. All right, you see how I did that? So we're using differentiability first and then going back to continuity. Let me show you another one. Okay, same thing over here. Maybe I should do this first. All right, same thing. Find values of a and b that'll make it differentiable. Okay, so we take the derivative, it becomes 2ax equals b. Nice simple equation. Now what do we do? Well, we plug in our one, okay? 2a is equal to b. Well, right, you can't solve this, right? So now, okay, you can go ahead and leave it like that if you want for right now. We go back to continuity. This, the limit from the left is going to equal the limit from the right, and we're going to plug in this value of 1, which is in question, okay? And when we do that, we get uh, a plus 1 and equals b minus 3. Well, see, now I have this here with two unknowns and this equation over here. What you can do, class, is solve for a for one value and use it as a substitute. So right here, I divided by 2, and I ended up with a is equal to b over 2. So now I take this guy, plug it back into the other one with continuity, right? And then, you know what? I'm able to solve it, b over 2 plus 1. And then you just do some algebra. I decided to multiply everything by 2. Okay. Um, and just solve it. And you end up with b is equal to 8. But one thing I want you to see, okay, for differentiability, when they ask you, because they will ask you this question, okay, find the value, the missing value that will make it uh, differentiable or continuous. Okay. But you notice how the most common one is differentiable. Usually they ask one continuity and then they, they ask one for differentiability as well. Okay. But I just wanted to show you that one. Let's go ahead and do, I'll go over these these um, two more, just so you guys can see. I always kind of want to throw a transcendental function here, a trig. What do you do? Same thing, differentiability. Find the values of a and b that will make this function differentiable, okay? So take the derivative of cosine, negative sine. Derivative of ax is a. Plug in your zero, you end up with a is equal to zero. Now you go back to continuity. Okay, limit from the left equals the limit from the right. And then what happens? You plug in your zero, right? X is zero, X is zero. And now you know your A value, which is also zero. You end up with B is equal to one. Cosine of zero is one. Okay. Last one here, also here. Um, same thing. We take the derivative of this guy here. Now remember, these A and B values... Um, they're constant, they're numbers, so don't let that trick you, okay? So over here we have uh, 3b, okay, all right, and then plus 4x equals, and remember, this is a constant, mx, the derivative would just be m. We plug in our what? Our 1, right? 
we get 3b plus 4 is equal to m. All right, we still have two unknowns. So what do we do now? We go back and use continuity. Limit from the left equals the limit from the right. Plug in that one. Okay, but now, okay, we have a value for m, don't we? We can use 3b plus 4. So now we have everything in terms of b. Okay, plug it in here. Uh, distribute and write our x is 1. Okay. And then we end up with 1 plus 3b plus 2. And then from here, just a, a lot of algebra that we can go ahead and do. We end up with b is equal to negative 1. So that's one thing I want you guys to see that, you know, differentiability, how to set it up. Uh, and then you go back and use continuity to go ahead and solve it. All right, guys, hopefully this makes sense and it helps you out. Uh, and I'll try to go ahead and put up some more questions, just those that I know will be on the AP exam. Thanks, guys. See you next time.